Welcome everybody to banishment ceremony. Uh, Flamingos are here first as they were the first team to drop out in yesterday's physical challenge. Um, you all have been here before, so you know the flow of it, but I'm gonna ask some questions. We're gonna talk for a bit, then it will be time to vote. You will slack me directly. If anyone has an idol they would like to play, they will play it. And then we will banish someone from this island. So um, to, to get started with it, um, Tommy, what was your reaction when you heard it was going to be a double banishment? Uh, that was rough because I knew not only did we have to stay on as long as we could, we had to like win. It's not just about being safe. You had to like, you had to win. You had to be number one to be safe. Yes. And Erica, what was your response or what were you feeling when we said you could either compete as an individual or as a team? Were you you know, you have to be concerned about how you're going to do, but also about how the rest of the team is going to decide. So what were you thinking was going to happen? I mean, it's really tough, but again, I'm, my mind kind of went back to like how many people there still are and, you know, not wanting to be that one person who doesn't go with their team. Um, and also it was just like a comfort thing where, um, I wasn't feeling super confident about what that individual could be. So, um, you know, I, I thought it would be more comfortable working with the team. And Devante, when you saw that everyone on your team all decided to go team, were you surprised, relieved? Did you feel that it was going to happen because you all had strong bonds? What were you feeling when you saw what everyone's choices were? I was not shocked. I knew pretty much that everyone would choose the team. I feel like we've had good team chemistry. Like I, I really like everyone here. If you would ask, like, if it had been the decision, like now, if we were doing it tonight, you know, things might have been different. But at the time, it was, it was a team. I felt connected to everyone, and I didn't have any reason to believe anyone would choose to save themselves. And what is making you say that? What is prompting you to say, if we had done it tonight, you would do, you would choose? Oh, I would have chose safety one hundred percent. Because you feel that your, your name is being written down tonight? Oh yeah, 100%. And why do you feel that way? It's just a vibe thing. I've played online games before, so I know like how interactions work. I know if no one's talking to you about game and just saying like, we're good, like we're good. You, you, I hate to hear we're good. It's like, okay, we're good, but like that's like basic. It's like now you're just trying to keep me intact. And I heard that from the people I trust a lot in this game, specifically like Tommy, all the tea out there was my number one and just hearing that from Tommy I'm like okay so now it seems like Tommy doesn't think I'm like I'm his number one so I'm like okay so I just have a vibe that I'm going tonight try to communicate and talk with even Erica and she was just, I was just like yeah I have a feeling I'm going tonight she was like yeah that seems to be the plan so it's just it's just it's we're here so I would I would have chose safety if it was tonight it's predicament I felt like this so Keith, you know, I have to ask, Devante is saying um, not only that he believes he's going home, but also he fully just admitted that Tommy was his number one. Now, you know, on any team, I'm sure that people are promising that to multiple people. Are you surprised to hear Devante admit that Tommy was his number one? Or did you have a feeling that that might be true? Um, I think, yeah, we have to like realize that, okay, everybody's going to talk to everybody because it, it, it's a game ultimately. Um, and we, I feel like if someone wasn't talking to everybody, we'd pretty much be doing a disservice to the game itself, to the format of the game, uh, to the respect of the game, and also to ourselves, because, like, it's going to happen. Um, I, I, I guess a little, I don't know, because, like, I, I obviously, like, number one is very strong, um, but, like, also, like, we, uh, like, you know, it's something that, that's thrown around, like, we see it often, like, on TV shows and such, because that's what you do to build connections and to bring stuff together. So, like, you can be shocked, but also, like, realize, okay, this is normal for this type of game. Like, it's for the respect of the game, and it's, like, it's strictly game. So, Katie, I'm going to ask you to go back to the challenge before we dive back into this. Um, did you feel that your team had a shot when you found out that it was going to be a physical challenge and that two teams were going to be going to banishment? Um, well, I will say that I had more confidence in the rest of the team than in myself. Uh, I did not ever think that I would win or contribute to winning a physical challenge, and I feel like I proved that. Um, I mean, I did have 
who, I mean, who knows when, you know, who's going to last and when it's like something like a static, like wall sit, it could be, you know, it could be anybody. Um, I feel like, I mean, I felt confident. Yeah. Like we have people who are certainly more athletic than me, which is the low bar on the team. And so, you know, who knows what could happen. Um, but I did not feel personal confidence in that. So. Sure. Um, and Devante, before we started that challenge yesterday, you know, you told us that you had ran three miles. So like your legs were not going to most likely be stable. Um, of course I have to ask, is that also like signaling to your team? Like, Hey, I chose to go team, but I might not be able to hold out long everybody because like this thing happened today. I mean, it was just an unfortunate situation that that, that happened. So I was like, it won't be physical today, but like, I still wanted to show, like, I'm still willing to try for my team. Cause like I said, at, at that point in time, like, this was my team. Like I wasn't one went against them like that. Like I didn't even know I would be in a way going against them tonight. Like I didn't, I didn't see myself in this position at all with the bonds that I had in our team. So I was just shocked. But at that point in time, like I just wanted to contribute and like try to win for all of us. Cause I knew more numbers meant a better chance for the whole team to be safe. So I didn't want anyone to go. Okay. So Erica, are you surprised hearing Devante saying that he believes it's going to be him going home tonight? I mean, I think there's a general vibe that you start to sense in Slack um, when people's hearts start to get set. Um, so, you know, I think we address that together on Slack, uh, acknowledging it. So I don't think it's a surprise. Okay, so Tommy, you know, it did come down to you last night for the physical challenge, kind of you alone with the Flamingos, um, which is hard because you do, you know, it, it's still team challenges. So yes, you're competing individually in that moment and it's just you against yourself, but also trying to, you know, make that win happen for the team. What was going through your mind as you found out you were the last one? Oh. A lot of, oh, hi. hi, Julia. Um, it was a lot of pressure because I know I'm not the smartest on my team and I can't contribute in the same way other people can in mental challenges. And so I felt a lot of pressure on myself. And I know it's not my fault, especially like I stayed the longest and I stayed as much as I could, but there's just that little bit of disappointment because I do want to contribute to the team and, and I didn't want us to be here tonight. So it, it was a lot of pressure. So back to kind of, you know, this is the second banishment your team has been to. And Keith, I'm going to ask you, you know, the last banishment you all went to, it was an instant one, which in some respects that can be easier because it's like, we got to make a decision now. Let's go with like the choice that makes everyone feel comfortable as opposed to when you have 24 hours between a challenge and a banishment, it leaves a lot more room for gameplay, discussion, who's saying what, comparing notes and all that. Did you find going into this banishment, that happening, that difference of like, oh, there, this isn't quite how it went the first time. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a different experience. It's like having an instant tribal, you really have to rely on the bonds that you made beforehand. Um, whereas like now, like you have to factor in, okay, what's been going on? Like what's been going on before the challenge? And like what's also going on now? Like what's being consistent? And then you have to weigh that together. Um, and then act on it as well uh, and think about like what's better for you long term and like what, what, what you can manage. Um, I feel like this, like preparing for banishment is definitely more stressful. Like it's, it's not, it's not going to be easy regardless. Like the, the last exit I feel like was very like heartfelt and like it got it, like got all of us. Yeah. Um, but having to prepare for it and knowing like, oh my God, this is coming. It weighs on you differently. It's like a, like an anchor, just like resting on your shoulders. Cause like, you know, oh my God, the time is coming. Whereas like instant, it's like, boom, you don't have any choice but to think about it. Just go. Yes. Uh, very much like a certain, you have to survive it. You got to get through it. Um, so Devante, it's interesting to me because last banishment, you know, I called you out for using the phrase, we, 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 implying that you were going to make it through that banishment, no problem, and still going to be here. I have to ask what has changed for you to so radically different now be in this banishment. Like, are you just performing so that we can blindside someone else here tonight? Or do you fully believe it's you going home? I wish I was performing, but I believe it's me. I don't know. I had a good alliance with Tommy, Keith, and Erica. You know, we were the four. I literally wanted them from the beginning. Like my confessionals, I had them at the top of my list. So I'm happy that I got to be on the team I got to be. But I just feel like 
I guess I wasn't as, even though I don't feel like they were that active on the app, I guess I was the least active and I just felt like it's going to be me. Like, I feel like I've asked around like powers, people have asked me about things and I'm pretty sure we know who has it. And so I feel like they want to use that to their advantage somewhat. I just feel like their connections with me, like Erica and my connection with Keith, like, I don't know. I just had that feeling. So I talked to them today and was like, yeah, I have a feeling you guys are voting me. If you do, like, no hard feelings. But, like, I just want to let you know I've been loyal to you all. Like, you're the ones I wanted to work with. Like I said, Tommy was my number one. So I had him. I would have never went against Keith. Keith may not have been my number one, but I wouldn't have went against Keith. Like, Keith and I have a good bond for a lot of reasons. So, like, it's just... I had the feelings like the conversations changed like everyone was busy today and couldn't talk so I'm just like I guess that changed overnight I don't know if there was like any conversations between them or decided that I was better prone to get out than Katie or they trust Katie more than me now I don't know I was loyal to all three of them never threw around any of their names to each other I couldn't tell you what changed besides I guess I wasn't on slack enough Katie, how do you feel hearing Devonte say that where he basically just named everyone but you saying they were working together in, in an alliance? Oops. Uh, unsurprised. Okay. Unsurprised. Good. Interesting. And Erica, you know, when he was saying, when Devonte was saying that, your face, you, you looked a little confused. Was anything that he was saying surprising information to you? I mean... <laughs> You know, I, I did pick him in the daisy chain for a reason. And, uh, you know, part of that was just our conversation on Sunday being told, oh, you're my number one. So, you know, it is, doesn't feel great when you're hearing, oh, someone else is not number one. And, um, you know, I think that all factors into this whole game. I also, to note, told them today each that I did tell each three of them that they were my number one because I wanted to work with the people I wanted to work with, which is how I got them all on the same team. So I confess that I told them prior, which has been days ago, like I reassured to Tommy that he was my number one, but I did tell them all at one point in time they were my number one because I wanted to get the team I wanted to get. And Erica knew that. I haven't told Erica anything about her being my number one. I told her I've had her back after we lost last night, which I did. I wasn't planning to vote Erica out today. Like, in any means because I didn't think Eric was planning to vote me out so like I told her all I told them I told everyone that they were my number one of those three just to build that alliance build that trust and I came clean about that so I feel like me playing such an honest game is just crazy because like they're still getting rid of me well I still... Dante, I'm, I'm gonna push back on that a little bit because I have to ask you said you you told them all this today we're six days into this game mm -hmm. are you just you came clean because they compared notes or you came clean because you wanted to come clean like I said, when I had the feeling after the like, initial conversations in the morning that like no one wanted to talk and everyone was busy today, like, like I said, I've played these games before. Like I know when to trust my gut, like when like you're like in the bad light, like when you're probably the one going. And I just had that feeling. Like I know when that feeling comes to trust it. And after having conversations to like try to get information out to like confirm what, when Erica basically did confirm to me when I was easily like, I just have a feeling I'm going tonight. She's like, yeah. So I just had that. So then I was like, if I go out, like I want to let them know that I was loyal to them three. Like I had their backs and I said the things I said, if they compare notes, like I said, the things I said to bring us together is one. Sure. I just think it's interesting that you're using the term honest game. Keith, based on everything that Devante has been saying tonight, do you feel that he's been playing an honest game? It's like, like, I guess like being told like number one is like, has a different kind of impact because then uh, you know what I mean like if it's like four different people it's like which one so I guess that like that can kind of hurt um I don't know it's 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 hard it's hard to weigh out uh I don't I like just hearing a lot of this now it, like makes you question like honesty like because it's like it, when, when you hear a number one to like four different people or multiple, a couple of different people. But at the same time, like if you're working together, like I know it doesn't like that's not a ne ne necessarily a, ne a negative point. Um, it just makes you think about things differently. So sure. I feel like I I honesty is relative. Like it could be honest for one person. It can be like, you know what I mean? That's a great point. Like they were saying the same things back because every time I said something to someone else, they were agreeing saying that too. So I, I just feel like that part like gets blurred because like, it's not like me saying like, number one, like, that's it. It's like, we're having conversations and like, each are saying like, yeah, like we've got each other's back. It's not just like saying like, quote unquote, you're my number one saying that. It's more of saying like, yeah, I have your back. I won't go against you, which is how I said it. I never was like, besides the Tommy, I was never like, you're my number one, like straight out texted that. It was more of, I have your back, like just know that. 
so, for me, and so I feel like, I don't know. Like, Tommy, go ahead. For me, but for me, and I hear that and I can believe it, but when I hear that it's being told to other people, it's one thing to have an honest game, but is it a trustworthy game? Can I trust that you mean it to me and you're not meaning it to other people? That's what made it really tricky. And the fact that you came clean to it now versus when I've heard about this in the past, over these six days, it's hard to believe it. You know what I mean? And it's still at the same time, I'm not the one that's flipping, you know? Like I told you guys still that I wasn't voting for you guys. So like, it's just, that's the ironic part to me is you can say all that, but still I was the one who was loyal. And that shows that. And this will show that. So like at the end of the day, like you guys are the ones who are backstabbing me. Whether I said to each of you, I'm your number one, I'm still not going against you because at this point in time, we don't have to. We wouldn't, we shouldn't have to. But you guys decided that you wanted to go against me. So like, so Devante, I want to ask a question about that. Yeah. I, I think, you know, it is interesting because to a degree, yes, you, you are having their back. You have not changed plans. You aren't going to flip with them. However, I want to touch, I want to circle back to something you brought up earlier was like that people were saying you weren't on Slack enough. So right. a thing about this game is like, because we can't see each other face to face, there is so much reassurance and communication that needs to happen via text. And for all we know, Katie knows a deep personal traumatic thing about each of these people because she was on Slack all the time. Do you feel that you were genuinely on Slack all the time getting to know them? Or were you like just on know. Slack to do the game playing? I feel like I got to know Tommy and Keith, like, like day, six days in, I got to know not, like, stuff, enough about them. Like, I appreciate Tommy's drag. I just love Tommy. So like, I have, I have talked to Tommy, got to know Tommy. So like, knowing Tommy's going against me like sucks. And I feel like I've got to actually really know, surprisingly, after everything I've said, Katie a lot. Like, I love Katie to death. I feel like Katie and I have had done good conversation since the beginning. Like, when I single handedly was like, Katie, pick Tommy, let's get this power team going. Like, but we had more conversations about life, like what we do every day and stuff like that. But I feel like maybe over the last day, has it been as deep? Like, has it gone more to like personal gameplay? Just, just more of like gameplay in general, not more personal life. Sure. Stuff like that could have been a downfall as well. Okay. And, and I also, I appreciate that answer because something else that I find very interesting, and Erica, I'm going to ask you, inevitably, we always get to the final, you know, the final banishment. And jury is always bitter, right? Like, I'm just going to say that, love you, jury, but they're always bitter. And they're usually bitter because it's like, we got to know each other on a personal level. But yet, you also, so it hurts more when people, you know, flip on you when you know them personally. But also, I've seen jury members be like, what's personal facts that you know about me? How do you navigate that? You want to get to know people, but also you don't want to get to know people so intensely that it becomes so painful to make that vote? I mean, maybe this isn't the best way to play the game, but you know, at the end of the day, I want to be competing against people who, um, you know, generally fascinate me as a competitor. And uh, I think, you know, if I have to lose and I want to lose against someone uh, who I'm excited to have win. Um, so, you know, for me, this is a game about meeting people and I want to connect to people because uh, why else would I be here if I didn't want to do that? I just thought you were a big fan of mine, but that's okay. You don't have to, you know, <laughs> we'll work on that later. Um, no, I'm totally kidding. Um, okay, I feel like we've had a lot of conversation. We've covered a lot of topics. I think it is now time to vote. We're going to begin with Erica. Erica, please slap me who you'd like to vote for. Katie, please slack me who you'd like to vote for. Tommy, please slack me who you'd like to vote for. Devante, please slack me who you'd like to vote for.
And Keith, please slack me if you'd like to vote for. I'm going to count the votes. Okay. Um, now, before I read the votes, does anyone have an idol that they would like to play? Okay, I'm going to ask that you all hold out your phone lights. Once I read the votes, the decision is final. Um, the person with the most votes will be asked to leave. Their quarantine will be up and they will be banished. Gorgeous, Erica. Um, first vote, Katie. That's one vote, Katie. Second vote, Devante. That's one for Katie, one for Devante. Devante, that's two for Devante, one for Katie. Next person voted off the island. Your quarantine is up, Devante. You have been banished. Is there anything you'd like to say before you leave us today? Um, I had a great time. I really enjoyed getting to know you all better. I really didn't think that I would be going. I really trusted my three. Be wary that everyone's telling everyone that they have their back and that their numbers, like I was honest about it, but you guys are foolish if you don't think that within y'all you have said the same things to each other. So clock the next one. I'll be waiting to watch it happen and wait to see because I got receipts. We'll show at the end of the game, but I wish you guys all the best. Please win the next challenge because I don't want any of your lovely faces to go. And I had fun. I had a blast. Devante, thank you for being here. You were very fun. Um, we so enjoyed having you be a part of uh, the Quarantine Island season four. We are going to miss you. I am personally going to miss your gorgeous eyebrows as we have discussed at length. Um, they're just so beautiful. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Flamingos, I'm going to ask that you now turn off your videos and mute your mics. And I'm going to ask that Buns of Teal please join us for the second round of banishment. Just need, and there's Jody. Hi guys, so you all know how this will work. Um, I will ask some questions. We're gonna talk about some things and then it will be time to vote. Let me look at my notes. Um, first off, before we even get into things uh, about how the challenge went last night, Scott, I wanted to address with you, last banishment at the end got very heated amongst the, at, the buns as Molly exited. Is there anything you wanted to address? I She called you a weasel. Did you feel that that was a fair assessment, a fair statement about how you had behaved in this game thus far? I think we all wish Molly all the best. And that is that, okay. Um, Alisa, I wanna ask, you know, hearing Molly say that about Scott, did that surprise you? Yes. Um, I had no idea about anything that she was saying the entire time. So I was very surprised when she said that. I also completely missed kind of what she said. Um, I heard something about like a weasel, which weasels are very cute. So I think that was a compliment towards Scott. Um, okay, so now I want to dive into yesterday's challenge. Joanna, you know the question is coming. You were the only person to choose individual, leaving your team to have to battle without you and having to immediately go to the second level. What went into your thought making process there? I'm almost afraid to tell you because I feel like I'm just going to be looked at like an idiot, but. I completely misunderstood the challenge and that might make me stupid or slow, but um, I honestly thought I was doing something selfless. And let me tell you why. With the lit limited information and time that we were given to make a choice of whether to point here or point there, I really thought that me pointing to myself was that I was going to be doing the challenge for my team as an individual. Does that make sense? It made sense in my head at the time. It's to, a, to a degree, it makes sense. However, I have to push back a little bit because I did then say, 
Joanna, you have safety, you are immune if your team goes. And there was no big reaction of like, oh shit, I just made the wrong call. It was like, okay. Right, 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 you right. So you knew what you were planning to do. So I know that you guys throw curveballs in this game as well, you and the producers. And so I hit the ball and won immunity. And who knew? Like, I doesn't matter. It, I'm an idiot. So yay for me. And it sucks for my team. And um, that's really all I can say. I'm sorry. Colleen, sorry. how did you feel when you saw that Joanna made that choice, unknowingly or knowingly, or knowingly. Um, leaving your team to have to go to the next level? Um, I also didn't quite understand. So when it was explained, I was like, oh, yeah, OK. I, I, I didn't even realize it was a disadvantage until it was like, take your hand off your leg. Right. You advantage i'm like oh okay like I, so i mean maybe we're just old and slow um so i have some sympathy there and i don't think she did it to like be malicious like i think it so i that's an and it it sucked to have to start um uh from like uh with with that disadvantage but you know i started sudoku last um whenever that happened in the past you know like uh, so we can come from behind. Like we still, like even with that, we still had more buns standing. You did. Longer. You did. Um, Jody, do you mm -hmm. believe that Joanna unknowingly chose to go individually? Um, I mean, I have no reason not to believe Joanna. There's 15 of us and one person, you know, didn't understand. So at the end of the day, hey, I'm not going to really crap on her we all make mistakes but I wasn't mad or anything. Scott how did, how did you feel because your team did have to go to the second level and it came down to you guys and the Royals and there were three of you left versus two of them and it really did seem like your team was going to pull ahead and win um, and one could argue that had Joanna gone with the team you would have had more bodies you wouldn't have had to go to the second level right away so what were you feeling and thinking while in the challenge last night I mean it could have been an advantage I don't know I mean we all like Colleen said we stayed in for a really long time um, and at that point I just really wanted like a great first place finish for the buns because we've we're great at second place um which we proved again um but i mean nobody can beat shannon so i, I mean it, it all moves so fast um i just really wanted our team to be to be strong and we were strong so i'm, I'm proud of everybody totally and speaking of strong i mean elisa you just had knee surgery girl last last night was insane um what I mean, I'll just say, we asked you after, you said the longest you've done in physical therapy for a wall sit is 10 seconds previous. And like last night you did 10 minutes. What happened? How, how were you able to do that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I have an ice pack on my knee right now as we're sitting here. Oh. Um, from for all the fans who see the confessionals. You see how I felt afterwards, but um, I was thinking about swimming, about all the wall sits I've ever had to do with my arms up in a streamline, as Jody pointed out that I was doing yesterday. Um, and I was just thinking about the team. I really just wanted to do something special for them since the past like couple of challenges, I was either like sitting out or just trying to help Colleen with the Sudoku. <laughs> Um, so I, I kind of was just focusing all on them and they were all really like encouraging me and keeping me going. And I was also sitting in my aunt's office that have really fun carved pumpkins in there. And I was just staring at them the entire time being like, if you drop, it's not good. Don't drop. <laughs> um, but yeah. And, you know, I did, I will say it was also a cool moment to see you kind of be in the end there, considering you were picked last of all the daisy chain, and yet here you were being the last person for the buns, against the wall, against the odds. Uh, did you feel a little bit of that in your mind as well? It's like, let me show this team how much of an asset I can be. Yeah, I think that's exactly how I was feeling. I really just wanted to like show them that like, hey, I am a good, part of this team like I, I really I can help you guys and I can like work 
to get you guys where you want to be and get us to first. Even though it didn't end up happening, I can't I can't beat Shannon's well sit. Nope, but I did my best. <laughs> um so Jody, how did how did you feel seeing, you know, you were one of the beginning or I think you were the first bun to drop out and then there were the I was. Left. How were you feeling about that after I didn't I didn't feel good, obviously. Um, I tried to make it as long as I could, and I'm still feeling from those uh, planks the other day, but it's not like that's really an excuse. No, but I did feel responsible. And in a, my immediate thought was, okay, well, now Joanna is automatically safe, and now there's less people to vote for. And we, and since we also went to tribe, like, I mean, banishment, the only times we've been to banishment, there's also been someone able to be safe so there's just like so many things going through my head in that moment and like mm -hmm. so disappointment and fear were the two first things <laughs> um both fun feelings i'm sure um but you do bring up a good point and joanna you have safety tonight do you feel like that um like are you relieved that you have it did you feel that your name was on the chopping block at all as I said before, I'm an idiot, and I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, Colleen, I do want to touch on what Jody was saying, which I do find very interesting, is both times your team has had to come to banishment, there has been one person that's safe, and that can make it challenging to figure out what plan do we do. Do you find it to be difficult? Like, okay, we have to factor this person out. Now what are we going to do instead of just, like, everyone's fair game? Oh, it's super hard. <laughs> I, you know, what is I'm learning about this game. It, it's like trying to figure out which is uh, the better thing to do. Keep the per like, do we, do I strategize and work uh, to make the strongest team for the next challenge? So I'm not coming back to banishment or do we look back at previous performance? Like it's, it's, it's just not real clear cut. Like it's not like an obvious, Oh, it's Yeah, hard. it is hard. Um, before I ask my last question, I do want to say you have a Star Wars in your background. Elisa is in the box next to you wearing a Star Wars shirt. It's very cute. Um, oh, and Joanna's got a lightsaber. I love it. Uh, so actually, this goes perfectly for my last question, Scott. The hard thing about this game is it can be very intense and you can form really quick relationships, right? Like you find yourself telling people things you haven't maybe told like a close friend or just stuff like that. And, but we are still playing a game and you still have to vote someone out. Are you finding that you're having to deal with that this early on? Like I, I will say myself, it feels the most of all the seasons we've done of everyone being very close and not wanting to vote someone out. Are you yourself struggling with that? Yes. Um, I think it is, it's really bizarre how quickly this gets into your head and like the rhythm of your day and then how quickly you get attached to everybody. Um, Cause you're just thinking about everybody. We're still all stuck in a global pandemic. Like everybody is affected and this means something to people in different ways. Um, and so you just want to meet people where they are and take care of them in the things that they need. Um, yeah. So with that, it is time to vote. Um, yes, Elisa. Hi. Um, I am making the very difficult decision to withdraw. I'm already crying already. Oh my god. Um, I am too. I am too. Um, oh. <laughs> okay. Um, due to my, <laughs> due to my mental and physical issues, I'm just, I, I need to pick myself out and take care of myself. Um, but I love everyone here very much, so. Alisa, um, I have open chat, the Zoom chat back up. Uh, we did have a conversation earlier today and we did talk about it. And I think you said you were open to discussing. Um, it is so, so hard during 
this pandemic and then this game, which is paranoia and like to really feel like, or to get a hold on like, what are people thinking about me? Am I coming off as a good person? Especially when you layer in like mental health and all of that. I know I myself struggle with that. Is there anything that you wanted to talk more about relating to that and how that factored in for you? Yeah. Um, back when my sister played, I was able to sit on the outside and be able to watch the confessionals and know what's going on. Um, coming in here, completely different ball game, complete different, like taking a toll on my, my head and my heart. Um, I love these people. I become so close with these four and I've been able to talk to them through all of this and they've been so supportive. Um, it's just really hard not knowing. Um, also, I, I already have previous like mental, like hard things going on. So this getting chosen last, not being able to participate because of my knee kind of like threw me back and it kind of got into my head. It has nothing to do with them. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with any of this. It's just me getting in my own head about it and making it really hard on myself. I personally did it to myself. So. Well, I don't want you to say you did it to yourself because I don't feel that that's true. I think that this game is so amazing in a lot of ways, but it really challenges you to kind of face the stuff that we all have to deal with, right? Like, how do we look at ourselves? How do we form connections? And it can really challenge you emotionally, mentally, physically, all of that. I do want to touch on like when we spoke earlier today, one of your concerns seemed to be that you were coming off as a bad teammate. Sorry, I'm getting so emotional. And I think everyone here would really agree that you were not that at all. And we're so <laughs> helpful and such an asset to this team. And I just wanna make sure that you feel and that you know that. Um, especially cause like, <laughs> People are going to yell at me for saying this, but like you are so young. And so I can understand. I remember being 22. I remember just graduating college and you're still figuring yourself out. But I hope that you know that you are now a part of this community so much and you're not going to be rid of all of us. And we're all still here for you. And we're all going to be in your lives, whether you want it to be or not. Um, yes, Scott, please go ahead. I mean, yeah, I would just say as well, Lisa, we talked about it today, but every single challenge you have always been like that clincher right at the end in every puzzle and everything we've done. The only time we lost was when you didn't play. So <laughs> I think just the, the self-awareness that you displayed today with our massive age difference at only 22 years old, as Kelsey likes to say, um, I mean, you, you're way more mature than all of us. Um, and we have really loved getting to be and on your off of that, Scott, you bring up such a good point, and thank you, I didn't mention this. It is so hard to figure out what's best for yourself, and it is so hard to make a decision in your best interest, sorry. <laughs> and I know that all of us here are so proud of you and so support this move. You are doing what's best for yourself, which is the most important thing. This game is fun, we love this game, but ultimately, you and all everyone here, you guys are the most important. So I'm really glad that you're doing that. Um, and of course, I have to, I have to, but would love for all the audience that's tuning in right now to please turn their videos on and give a heart, a kiss, a clap, whatever, cheer. Let me hear you. Let Elisa hear you. Love you, Elisa. Love you, Elisa. We love you so much. Love you, Elisa. We love you, Elisa. Elisa, you're great. You're the best. Love you, Elisa. You're the best. Elisa, we have so enjoyed having love you. Love you, Elisa. We love you so much. We're going to miss you so much, but we're so glad you're a part of our community and we're so proud of you and we support you so much. Thank you. Um, please make sure you tune in to a very emotional QI reply after this. Kat will be on with Britt. We will be touching on mental health. It is very important. If any of you are struggling, please don't hesitate to reach out. We got you. We're here for all of you. This community really loves each other. And hi, Ash. Did you come to wish your sister any, anything yeah. before we go? Do you want to say anything, Ashley? We're, you're muted. Yeah, I, sorry, I, yes. Um, I think today in talking to Elisa, I wanted her to know that like, this game is supposed to push you and push you and you're going to learn a lot about yourself. But sometimes that means like, 
not pushing too hard and it's okay to reflect and center yourself and know what's best for you. And I'm really, really proud of her and I love her so much. We love you, Lisa. Um, have a good night, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.